Our next speaker is Jennifer Sill. She serves as Senior Advisor for Cybersecurity at the U.S. Department of Energy, where she guides policy development on a range of cybersecurity and energy infrastructure issues. She has had a long time, uh, very excellent cyber experience at the U.S. Air Force, uh, working for U.S. Cyber Command, and she also served as Director of Cybersecurity Policy at the National Security Council at the White House. Uh, Jennifer, we're looking forward to your remarks. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you to Representative McNerney for your continued attention to these critical issues and all of you for being here today to talk through this and Lexington, of course, for allowing us to, for making this possible. Um, so here's the situation. The danger is very real. Cyber threats are continuing to grow and it's getting ever more complex than it has ever been before. And the attacker really has the advantage here. Attacks are easier to launch. Their frequency, scale, and sophistication continue to increase, and it is much easier for the attacker than it is for the defender. In fact, even the intelligence community's worldwide threat <coughs> assessment from earlier this year, when the intelligence chiefs came together, presented, they emphasized that states are now using cyber as a tool of statecraft, as a tool of statecraft to hold critical infrastructure at risk. And so now, more than ever, because guess which sector underpins every other critical infrastructure sector, and it is energy that, did, that everyone depends on. Uh, energy security is a national security issue. And this is why Secretary Perry has no higher priority. This is a particularly hard problem uh, because 90% of our nation's energy infrastructure is privately owned. So it takes an already hard problem and makes it even more complex and working through a number of different partnerships to really make this possible. DOE is the lead federal agency for enhancing the reliability, security, and resilience of energy infrastructure. And we're a unique sector-specific agency because we actually share the risks as part of the sector ourselves of the same sector we support through uh, owning and operating the power marketing administrations, which are responsible for the transmission and marketing of federal hydropower. Now, as that lead agency, we are changing the game, and here's how we're going to do it. First, we started with modernizing how we're organized in the department. And we've established a new office, which is the Office of Cybersecurity, Energy Security, and Emergency Response. And I like to describe this and think of it as the sector-specific agency in a box. And what this does is really shows that the mission of supporting the sector and security and resilience issues is a core mission of the department and it's not additional duty spread across a number of offices. And this office will be headed by an assistant secretary and dedicated to that mission. And we're coupling that also with tangible actions. And so looking at uh, how to address known gaps in cybersecurity readiness, we've established an, an initiative call it ACES, or Accelerating Cybersecurity for the Energy Sector. And this is really a suite of programs where we are either growing or creating new space to be able to address those gaps that we've identified in uh, various forums and exercises like GridX, uh, where industry and government come together to really work through and exercise the planning that we've been doing. Uh, the Priority areas and those programs that we're working to establish include, first and foremost, shared situational awareness across operational infrastructure. What we have really learned where we've made a lot of progress is really being able to help with that visibility and not just the visibility of individual companies or government versus industry, but really being able to help create sort of shared understanding and visibility of what's taking place. Another is uh, response capabilities and continuing to bolster and support both industry efforts to self-organize and uh, provide assistance, but also government uh, response capabilities. Uh, testing facilities, uh, Representative McNerney mentioned about testing components and leveraging the unique capabilities of the national labs to, to help with that. Um, and more importantly, really be able to inform resilient design into um, grid modernization efforts. Uh, and, of course, federal and state collaboration and leveraging the national labs to drive innovation in this area. The cybersecurity 
uh, the, excuse me, the Energy Sector Cybersecurity Multi-Year Plan, uh, which DOE recently published, provides the longer-term guideposts for what this office and what we as a department are doing to support the sector. Uh, in the big areas there, the priorities are organized under uh, strengthening energy sector cybersecurity preparedness, coordinating response and recovery, and accelerating game-changing research and development. One place that we do that, a number of folks who have worked with the labs and with the department in the past, um, is through a program called Cybersecurity for Energy Delivery Systems. Um, this is a highly collaborative program and really a unique way to be able to uh, bring various stakeholders together, uh, including academic research institutions. So every project under SEDS uh, has a lab partner, industry partners, and academic institutions. And this really allows us to bring together the capabilities of the national labs and make them more accessible with industry partners. Industry partners bring to the table a uh, real-world understanding of what it really means to develop and market technologies or to actually deploy them in their infrastructures. And of course, the academic institutions uh, create the opportunity to create a workforce pipeline and really be able to help train the next generation of cybersecurity professionals in this space. Uh, one particular project and kind of to demonstrate the transformational nature of how we're looking to be able to create uh, inherently more resilient systems is a project that ABB is leading with labs and academic institutions where they actually use the physics of the grid to thwart attackers. And what they do is take a controller, the controller when it receives a command, whether even if it is what the controller would understand is a legitimate command, it still says, let me check with my friends and do some quick polling and check with other controllers to say, is this really a legitimate command? If I take this command right now at this time, what would happen? And the controllers are able to do quick modeling and determine whether if that command was taken at that particular time, whether it would cause harm somewhere in the system. And it does all of that in under four milliseconds, which is the latency requirement. So it really leverages this machine learning and understanding to be able to create a system that can adapt to an environment that we would expect that attackers still do have an advantage and be able to put it back into the defender space. But even with all of that and the amazing work that we're doing and that we're helping support and that's happening in industry, we do still need all of your help. Partnerships, after all, are critical to our success. Federal, state, and local, but also an industry that includes <coughs> asset owners, vendors, service providers, everyone in this ecosystem coming together to work together. Uh, things like reviewing and testing emergency response plans. Ensuring that cybersecurity is incorporated into state energy assurance plans. This is an area where we can help, providing technical assistance. And reinforcing policies, this is an important part, reinforcing policies that promote shared situational awareness and collective defense to, to be able to make it easier for information sharing happening both among companies, amongst themselves, but also between the federal government, state and local governments, and industry. Uh, and of course, prioritizing cybersecurity and funding and investments. Um, this is just as important for government as it is for industry. Uh, and then coming together in public-private partnerships, uh, like sector coordinating councils and other forum, uh, collaborative projects, uh, like our uh, research and development programs, uh, or exchange of ideas in awareness events like this one, to share and understand the different perspectives among all of the stakeholders that are part of this ecosystem. Uh, and together, I am confident we can flip the dynamic in this and make it harder for the adversary and regain the advantage. All of this and more, by the way, is available at energy.gov.